share play, screen share, shared with you, FaceTime for everyone, focus for anyone, status, notification summaries, more better maps, notes and weather, much better Safari, IDs, keys, on-device Siri, live text and wide translate, lens, I mean lookup, brighter spotlight, more musical memories, health sharing, mobility caring, privacy reports, mail protection, private relay, legacy, recovery, and so much more. It's the iOS 15 public beta. It supports every iPhone going back to the 2015 6S and 2016 SE. Yes, seriously, you can grab it now, but just remember, beta means beta. So always practice safe update and backup. Then buckle up. Sponsored by Brilliant. I'm breaking down all the most important features from all of Apple's public betas and doing a slew of technical deep dives as well. So hit the subscribe button and bell so you won't miss any of them. Zoom won the pandemic. Wasn't even close. It got verbed. But thanks to FaceTime's ease of use, integration, and absence of continual security malfeasance, it also saw a ton of apples to apples usage as well. And that's what's being built on in iOS 15. Spatial audio, which builds a 3D sound stage all around you, is being used to virtually isolate and place everyone in a group call relative to where they appear on the call to help them sound clearer and more natural. And at this point, just spatial audio, all the things. There's a new grid view because everyone floating and throbbing on screen is fun for a demo or a few minutes, but just way too much all day, every day. The grid is currently limited to six people though, while group calls can still go over 30. You can turn on voice isolation, which is like the opposite of active noise cancellation, helping the other person on the other end hear what you're saying without all the din of the background, all the clutter or you can flip to wide spectrum, which is like the opposite of transparency mode to amplify every little sound in your environment so the person you're talking to can hear what you hear, like to better include them in a happy birthday party or musical moment. If you wanna hide any personal items or just the mess behind you, you can turn on portrait mode. The controls in general can be a little tricky to find or can change state or place unexpectedly. So I hope Apple just keeps iterating on that part before release. And all of those things are available to third-party apps as well. So Zoom or anyone else could use the built-in portrait mode if they wanted to, at least from release point on. Apple's really on complete overdrive this year when it comes to third-party integrations for a bunch of the new features, which, you know, what's going on in the US and EU or not, you just really love to see it. You can also create FaceTime links now and either share them or attach them to calendar events. And in addition to Apple devices, Android and Windows users can open them up on the web to join in the call. No account or login needed. Anyone using the link needs to be approved by someone, anyone already on the call. And if you accidentally social the link and someone unintended joins, anyone already on the call has 30 seconds to just yote them right back out again. Then there's SharePlay, which turns your FaceTime call into a group music or video experience. And yes, you'll need some family, friends, or colleagues on iOS 15 to test that with, but everything is just automatically in sync for everyone. All controls work for everyone. If anyone talks, the volume will adjust so you can promptly shush them and point them towards the built-in messaging functionality instead as the laws of nature and decency demand. And they can thank you later with the new Memoji styles and poses because we all know it's all about the emoji and Memoji. For quick songs, TikTok, stuff like that, I think it'll be great right on the iPhone. For longer form shows, movies like TV or Disney+, Plus, especially Twitch streams, really long Twitch streams, you can start them on your iPhone but watch them on your Apple TV, which I think will be far better, just far more comfortable and kind of really sets the stage and the tech for shared VR and AR experiences one day, which has me all shades of hype. Even though Apple is making SharePlay available to all developers, all apps, there's been nothing from YouTube about it yet, which is vexing because it would be legit great with this. Also no Netflix because they seem to always wanna go it alone and never surrender any interface to Apple ever and no Spotify, which for a company that complains so continuously about the lack of system access seems to also never take that access when and as it's offered, which is just so victim-y. You can also use SharePlay to screen share, but not just play, but pretty much anything and everything on your iPhone display. 
And while you're still on FaceTime, still talking, still seeing each other, it's been available on the Mac since the elder days of iChat. But on iOS, it's just one of the biggest remaining checkboxes ever, finally getting that box checked. And it's gonna save so many support trips across town for so many people, so many. Notifications are like the essential truth of the vampire Lestat, that anyone making an informed choice will just always, always want notifications. And anyone deluged by notifications will do almost anything to be rid of them forever. And Apple's trying to help with that tension, that problem again, again, by expanding Do Not Disturb into something more nuanced called Focus. With Focus, you can select a preset like OG Do Not Disturb Sleep, which has been around for a minute, first in clock, then in health, but is now newly integrated here, personal or work, or you can roll your own. At that point, it becomes like a force shield, just bouncing off all the interruptions all around you, except for the people and apps you specifically choose to allow through. And whether to curb our anxiety or just our FOMO, you can choose whether or not to let time sensitive notifications to come through no matter what as well. And Siri can even announce those for you if you have like a workout focus and are off on a run with your AirPods. So what's considered truly time sensitive? Apps get to decide that for themselves. They get to opt into the integration, but if they abuse it, you can opt them right back out again and hard. And you can also go in and set different home screens to show or hide based on the focus. So the apps that are most available to you are the ones most appropriate for that specific focus. And once you invoke a focus on one of your devices, like your iPhone, it gets invoked across all of your devices, like watch, iPad, Mac, and anyone on the other side will see that you're in DND mode and can wait and message you until you come out again. So they really do not disturb you. Or if it's urgent, they can choose to punch through your shield anyway, which again, should cut down on anxiety and FOMO about missing something really urgent. And if anyone abuses that, it'll just give you the joy of muting that conversation or an excuse to block them full on if you have to. And I realize for some people, focus may sound like a lot. Like I already got 12 jobs and my phone shouldn't be another one of them a lot, which is why I got a damn iPhone to begin with a lot. But Apple provides those sample personal and work focuses and recommendations and steps you through the people and the apps. So it's super easy, not even an inconvenience to get started. And you can always just stick to old school DND and no one will ever judge you for it, except maybe Thomas Frank, because Thomas Frank. And since Apple's given notifications in general, a fresh coat of icon and profile pick inspired paint, and will bundle up app notifications into a summary for you while keeping people notifications front and center, it's more glanceable and manageable and even more human now either way. Maps is getting Apple's version of Google Earth, at least the big spinny globe part. More interestingly though, a new more detailed and more stylized city and driving experience and a more immersive augmented reality walking directions feature that lets you scan to place yourself for really accurate step-by-step -step directions. And I hate, I just hate to be the boy who cried future here again, because it's becoming such a cliche, but this kind of tech is yet another example of Apple doing what needs to be put into place today in order for us to have a much more exciting tomorrow. And I just can't wait for that day to get here. Same with IDs in wallet. And I know, I know it's gonna feel like forever for every state, province, region to add licenses, known travelers, and other documents to Apple's system, but at least it's starting now. And ID uses the same security as Apple Pay. So you need Face ID, Touch ID, or your passcode to authenticate your ID. And if your phone was previously locked and someone takes it when you're presenting your ID, they can't unlock it any further than the wallet interface without your face ID, touch ID, or passcode. And if you get particularly bad vibes, you can always squeeze the power and volume buttons to just crash the West Wing. And what I mean by that is throw away the hardware keys, disable biometrics, and lock everything else down until you re-enter your passcode or password, which will require you to have or regain physical control of your phone again. And when you fold in home, office, and hotel keys, we're just one step closer to living our best physical card-free life, and I can't wait for that either. I'm gonna cover Safari properly in the macOS preview because long video already long, but unique to the iPhone implementation is the new bottom-loaded tab bar, which in theory is great for one-handed ease of use, so you can just do your coffee talk and walks 
while browsing way better, but it's currently implemented, it just jumps from bottom to top too much and adds way more cognitive load and interface spelunking than it ought to. And I'm really hoping Apple spends more time with it prior to release to just zero regression it like every version of Safari has been mandated to do since the beginning of time or Alexander or whatever. It should be the same rules as Apple Watch. Every interaction just as fast, WebKit fast as possible. Apple pre-announced the new accessibility features this year, so I've already got a video up on those. Also some of the new privacy features like a full-on private relay deep dive, which comes with iCloud Plus, the new name for the extra storage tiers, only now with more features than just extra storage. So if you have that or Apple One, you have private relay and also hide my email, which lets you use rando sign in with Apple style addresses instead of your own personal one, but also custom domains for your iCloud email that you can create and share with your whole family, even HomeKit secure video storage that doesn't count against your iCloud limit. And that I think is just Apple trying to increase the value of the plus services bundles that they keep offering. Also, because for most regular human type, non-infosec, high value target type people, having our photos stolen is far less of a concern than losing access to those photos forever. So Apple is adding both account recovery contacts and digital legacy contacts. It works by you picking one or more people you trust to help you get back into your account if you're ever locked out. They get a code and they can give it to you and then you can use that to regain your access. And you can choose the same people or different people, friends or family, to get access to your data on the event of your death. And Apple's by no means the first to do this, but it's really, really important that they're doing it because even though you're gone, that can be the absolute worst time for them trying to deal with all the stuff you left behind. With Find My, you can now see family and friends in real time. So it's less frustrating when trying to track each other down at Disney. And you can also get separation alerts for devices, including AirTags, so you leave no bag behind. Plus you can locate devices that have been powered down for up to 24 hours, even ones that have been erased but are still activation locked. And they'll say they're activation locked right on the screen and trackable in case some brainiac thinks they can try and sell them for a quick buck. Either way, anyway, always remember that you are not the Batman. So never, not ever put yourself in a position where you might lose your life just trying to get back your stuff. Apple's on-device intelligence team has just been Hulk smashing it over the last few years. And this year in particular with live text, it's not something I expected or anticipated, but it's become one of my favorite new features. And yes, sure, Google has had lenses since at least 1812, but I like having live text and translate just system-wide on iOS. And I all caps love the way that Apple is implementing it because just like the name on the tin says, it's really truly live. And that means it's not scanning and indexing text in the background. It's not round tripping to any servers. The machine learning models and Apple neural engine cores are just tearing through it all on device and in real time. And it is something. Open a photo with text on it, whether it's typed or handwritten, it'll make it live. Open the camera, don't even take a photo, same thing. Go to a web page with a picture on it. You get the idea. Live text has a particular set of machine learned skills. And if you come across an image, it will look for the text, it will find it, and it will kill it, making that text selectable, copyable, even actionable for you. Like see a link, click it, see a number, call it. I sometimes can't even tell anymore what's Safari and what's a screenshot that I've stuck in photos. It is completely trippy. The on-device computer vision system can also identify objects in photos now as well and look them up using Siri's knowledge system. It's like the first primitive dragged from the primordial AI and ARU stage of a full-on Jarvis HUD system. And yes, I realize this is a recurring theme in this preview, but a nerd can and will dream. All of this is now also integrated into Spotlight Search as it should be. And you can access that now right from the lock screen if that's how you wanna roll. Even Siri. Even Siri is living its best life now with improved sequential inference to better keep context during conversation and hold on to your bits, on-device speech recognition and offline query processing. And that means Siri doesn't have to round trip to Apple's servers for the basics anymore, which not only removes a particularly annoying previous point of failure, but makes the whole system feel so much more responsive, like when the Mac moved from Intel to M1 more responsive. Apple's also adding a feature that I've spent many a WWDC lobbying for in person, 
ever since they added remember this a few years back. Basically, whatever you could use NS Activity to remember for you previously, you can now use to share photos, web pages, just, hey, share this, name your target, and it's shared. And I know that might sound like just a minor convenience, but it's one of those first few critical steps that Apple has to take, never mind to make Siri dominate like Kramer in karate, but just to make Siri competitive again in the assistant space and to help along the way to get out and push, so to speak, brilliant.org slash Sonny Ritchie is the best place to start. It's this awesome website and app that'll teach you the fundamentals of algorithms and neural networks. Everything from character recognition like live text to search like Spotlight, but also math, science and computer science, logic and deduction, physics, quantum mechanics, game theory, even cryptocurrency, and more. Because it's built on this whole process of learning while doing and solving real challenges in real time with no memorizing long messy formulas or fact sheets, no tests or grades, just instant feedback that coaches you bit by bit so you can rapidly improve and learn the foundational concepts behind all the most important new careers and technologies literally before you even realize it. So if you wanna go from just using iOS to maybe one day working on it, you can get your start with Brilliant today. Just go to brilliant.org slash Richie or click the link in the description. Pick a course and get started now. Brilliant.org slash Richie. And clicking on that link really helps out this channel. Hit the playlist or YouTube's recommendation above for videos on all the other public betas. More features I didn't have room to cover in this video and a bunch of deep dives to come. Just hit that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.